Jens Stoltenberg is staying on as NATO Secretary General for another year. This is the third time Stoltenberg has been asked to stay on as the alliance's chief civil servant, and it comes ahead of a pivotal NATO leader summit next week in Lithuania. On the agenda, the potential fast-tracking of Ukraine's membership bid to join the alliance. Artis Pabrik served as Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister of Latvia from 2019 to 2022. He is now Chairman at the Northern Defence Policy Centre. Mr. Pabrik, good to speak with you again. Good evening. Got a good day. I, I wonder, sir, if you can start with your thoughts on yet another extension for Jens Stoltenberg as NATO Secretary General. Is this the right move? Well, uh, in Latvia and I think in this northern European Baltic region, uh, I believe this is taken as a positive news because uh, I will speak uh, straight as I usually do. We are at war. And during the war times, I think uh, it's important also to have a stability within NATO. And we know that uh, it was not clear who would really get this uh, appointment in the next contest for uh, Secretary General in NATO, because there have been several quests and several, several speculations. So looking from our perspective, we know Mr. Stoltenberg is a great leader for NATO. So I think here in region, we definitely support such an extension. You mentioned there's been no clear consensus, but a lot of speculation as to who will eventually replace Mr. Stoltenberg. And one name that keeps coming up is Ursula von der Leyen, that this one-year extension for Mr. Stoltenberg gives her time to finish her term as the head of the European Commission. What, what do you make of that suggestion that Ms. von der Leyen take over? Uh, she could be a strong candidate. I know her personally very well. And... Uh... Uh, if you have a little bit of time, I could try to quickly speculate. You see, the war in Ukraine, the Russian aggression, actually put on the front line uh, also in NATO the questions uh, from which region should come as the next secretary general. And of course, uh, here in the region of uh, the Baltic states and Poland and Northern Europe, we very much would like to see somebody from this part. On the other hand, we know that uh, there are certain differences between North and East Europe on the one side, and maybe the Western and Southern Europe from another side. So from that perspective, uh, Madame von der Leyen is uh, definitely a possible compromise candidate because uh, being a German on the one hand puts her on the careful side, but being um, a former defense minister and quite well known also here in the region, uh, that makes her, her also a quite probably acceptable candidate also, let's say, for such country as Latvia. Inter that's an, an interesting way, way to break it down, because it, all of this comes, of course, as NATO leaders uh, prepare to meet in Lithuania next week. And we know that a lot of members, they want to see some clarity around Ukraine's future membership in NATO. What do you want to see in Lithuania? What do you expect to see? Well, uh, I am realistic here, and I understand that uh, in Vilnius summit, there will not be clear words saying that uh, Ukraine will be accepted now, because, of course, until uh, Ukraine is still waging war, uh, there will be no consensus to get the country in. But what we want from the Baltic side, and what is actually the only uh, right uh, way is to tell Ukraine that, yes, we in principle uh, see you as a member of NATO and we will do everything for you to make you win this war because we must end this war. And this war cannot end with Russian victory, so it must end with Ukrainian victory. It's very clear. So there must be these messages. And secondly, we know that Ukraine is searching for the interim time kind of bilateral security arrangements, because a part of NATO, there is not much who could give security guarantees for Ukraine. So I believe that it will be very important to find a consensus in Vilnius about the wording in final NATO documents, how they will reflect the Ukrainian path to membership. There, there is some public reporting, though, sir, so Jesse Alliance is divided o over this question of Ukraine's membership. The United States, for example, President Biden has said he, he doesn't support a, a fast track for Ukraine into NATO. What's your message to, to those who are against providing this clarity or the clear path to membership for Kyiv? Um, well, we must understand what, of course, means a fast track. Mm -hmm. But it's very clear that in uh, assessments of Russia as a danger, Many our allies, let's say, did not see it timely that this war is coming. This is why they were turning also to such countries as Baltic countries, to Latvia, 
to asking for our opinion immediately after the 24th of February when war started. Uh, I would say that um, what is relevant for Ukraine in this NATO summit, that first of all, we are uh, beefing up support to Ukraine because uh, Ukraine is losing people, it's bleeding with every day when war is prolonged. But uh, to stop the war, we can do only by supporting Ukraine even more strongly. And secondly, we must not mingle words once we tell, yes, NATO is the only guarantee in the long term for such countries as Ukraine, Finland, Sweden, or anybody of us who is in a closer uh, proximity to Russia. So there must be a clear word that we will go this path, and that will also make Moscow think twice again once they are continuing to wage this war. The, the other uh, final issue to touch on with you is the perpetual issue uh, for NATO, and that's uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg's hope that everyone gets a 2% spending of GDP as, as a floor. Uh, certainly not every member of NATO is, is there yet. What is your expectation for the Allies on this spending uh, target at this summit? Uh, I would say that, uh, first of all, we must keep this goal. Uh, and you know, for such countries as Latvia, we already go for 3% spending and perhaps more. But most important is that first, we keep uh, in sight the goal of 2%. But secondly, we do everything to beef off, up our defenses, military industry and capabilities. Because um, there have been a number of countries also in other continents which were hoping that Western assistance to Ukraine will actually make us weaker. Now it's clear that actually by assisting to Ukraine, we finally start to become stronger because our industries are developing, cooperation is developing, and financing is developing. We have to keep this uh, way, this road, this path, and things will be right.